Welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. This is the video that I promised you. I wanted to be able to show you how to utilize the left side of this oversized cabinet. This is it. This is a pull-out shelf that stores all of my nail guns and I have nail guns on the back side as well. This takes up a very small amount of space on my wall and that was the goal because space on my wall is critical. I just don't have enough. Well, this takes up a very, very small amount. So let me show you how I made this today. So let's get started. Now what I want to do today is build a shelf, literally, to be able to hold these various nail guns. Now one of the things, in the most traditional way, is just take up the wall space, and I would need about 30 inches of wall space by about well, 30 inches again. To me, that's a very valuable space that I don't want to give up. So what I want to be able to do is cut one board that's 14 inches wide, and put these nail guns literally on both sides of that. And instead of taking up 30 inches of space on the wall, I'm gonna take up about roughly six inches of space. I could have designed this little cabinet in many different ways. But what I decided to do is to make this 14 inches wide. That's the depth of the cabinet that's already on the wall. And I also have some drawer slides that are 14 inches wide as well. So that's going to be a perfect match. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut the melamine to 14 inches wide. And I'm going to make this 30 inches tall. And that will be plenty tall to be able to accommodate all of the nail guns that I have. The next part of this little cabinet is to be able to cut out the portion that I can use to attach the drawer slides. Now this is going to be 8 inches wide by the 14 and I'm attaching the drawer slides right in the center of this. When you're attaching the screws to the melamine it's actually best to go ahead and pre-drill a pilot hole and this helps to prevent that melamine from buckling up and standing proud of the surface of the material. It's also a lot easier to be able to attach these drawer slides now before this little cabinet is assembled. I said I was attaching these drawer slides right in the dead center of this board. And to be able to do that easily, I just went ahead and drew a pencil line along the center line and that way I could just simply align the drawer slides over my pencil line, drill my pilot hole, and attach the screws. And this is a whole lot simpler to be able to attach these drawer slides now before the cabinet is assembled. I really would hate to imagine having to put these drawer slides on when the cabinet was already built. It would be much, much more difficult. So as I have said many times before, a little bit of planning <laughs> goes a long ways to be able to make these projects easier. With all the parts completely cut now and the drawer slides in position, it's time to be able to go ahead and assemble this little cabinet. Now I'm using the glue and I'm also using the staples and the staples will hold into this melamine quite well. Now, yes, I could have used rabbit joints. I could have done all types of things. But again, this is not going to be holding a whole lot of weight. And the glue and the staples will hold this really good. I am not going to be worried about this cabinet falling apart anytime soon. With the two sides stapled and glued into position, it was time to be able to do the same with the back. So I'm just applying the tight bond glue to all of the surfaces and then I'll use the nail gun and shoot my staples into position. Now one of the things that you may have noticed while I was assembling this cabinet is that I'm bringing the surface to be stapled right up to the edge of the workbench. This really does a couple of things. 
It actually helps me to get everything aligned and it makes it where I can hold it securely before stapling it. By having the cabinet right at the edge of the workbench, it allows me to be able to staple freely into the material without having any interference with the workbench itself. After stapling both of the sides in place, the easiest way to be able to staple along the bottom is just to rotate the cabinet up and that gives me easy access to be able to staple the bottom in place. The other thing that I am not worried about, because this is a shop cabinet, is the little holes that are left by the staples. So I'm not even going to bother to fill them at this point. Now the cabinet itself is completed, and it's time to be able to install that onto my oversized cabinet that I had mounted to the wall in my previous video. And I'll put a link to that video up top. Now again, there was many different ways that I could attach this. I had thought about screws. I had thought about actually drilling all the way through and putting some bolts in it to hold it. But again, this is not a real heavy cabinet. And at least for right now, to be able to make it easy to be able to install, I'm just sliding it up into place and then nailing it into position with the um, inch and a quarter nails and I think that's going to hold just fine. I think later on to be able to provide some additional security, I'll go ahead and pre-drill some holes and attach some screws. But for now, I think this will hold just fine. No need to be able to over-engineer this project. I want to be able to keep this as simple as I possibly can. But at this point, it's all nailed in. The only thing that's left to do is actually build a shelf that will hold the nailing guns themselves. Now the width of this shelf is actually 14 inches also. Because I put the box together using the material on the outside. So that allows me to be able to maintain the 14 inches for the shelf. Now the other factor that you have to consider is that this shelf needs to be one inch smaller than that opening for where the drawer slides are. So I measure that very carefully, and then I use the actual two pieces of wood that I'm gonna have at the top of my shelf as a spacer and drew my line. And then I'll take that over to the table saw and cut it off. One of the things that I wanted to point out to you is that I am using a respirator to be able to cut this uh, melamine. This has the medium density fiberboard for the inside of it, and I really don't want to breathe this stuff. So using the respirator is a good thing to be able to do. And you need to be able to get into the habit of that as well as I do also. Because I know I'm guilty sometimes of not using the respirator when I really should. To make it easy to attach these two small pieces of the wood. And these are 14 inches long by the 2 inches wide. I'm just using a half inch a spacer to be able to get these approximately in the center. I know it's about an eighth of an inch off. That's really okay. And I wasn't going to try to cut something to be exact. This is close enough to the center line to be able to make it work. So with this board off of the table, I'm just able to go ahead and put my two ends on and have them approximately centered. And then again, I'll use the glue and I'll go ahead and st staple these into position. A quick little pencil line helps me to guide exactly where that glue needs to be. And then I can just slip this block right into position. And then I'm going to slide it over to the edge of the table again. And then I'll use the gun to shoot the staples to be able to fasten it into position. And of course I'm going to use the exact same procedure to be able to do the other side. Now are there other ways to be able to attach these little pieces at the end? Yes, yeah, certainly there is. I could have used the dado and be able to put it in that way, 
But again, this is just a simple shop cabinet that is going to hold just fine with the glue and the staples. There was really no need, in my opinion, to be able to get real fancy with this cabinet. And I want to be able to show you with these different type of projects that oftentimes there's really no need to over engineer them and that you can just take advantage of very simple techniques to be able to have an effective project that's easy to do with a relative limited amount of tools. Because in actuality, if you didn't have the nail guns, you could use a hammer and a nail. To attach this portion of the drawer slides, all I did is again, I marked a center line on this board. Now this board's two inches wide, so a center line right down at the one inch point made it where it was easy to be able to attach this. And again, a quick pilot hole, and then I just screwed the screw into position right on that center line. Because this is in essence a shelf rather than a drawer, there's really no fancy alignment that is necessary for this drawer slide to be able to work. The most important thing is to make sure that this shelf is one inch smaller than the opening. That accommodates for the amount of space necessary for the drawer slides themselves. A quick test of the fit and to make sure that everything is going smoothly. And it does. I love it. I think this is going to work out really nice. The only thing left is to attach the nail guns to this shelf. And to be able to do that, what I'm just doing is just laying this out to the approximate location that I want. And then I'm going to use as a temporary measure some screws to be able to act as the handles to be able to hold these guns in position. Again, this is a video showing the absolute simplest and easiest solutions that I can come up with. I'm sure over time I'm going to go ahead and make some wooden handles for these uh, nail guns to be able to rest on. Now that the guns are in position, I'm just taking a pencil and marking onto the board exactly where I want to drill the hole for the screws. Now again, just a reminder, this is only a temporary measure, but it's going to work for the time being. The next thing I do is just go ahead and drill the pilot holes where my pencil marks were, and I'm ready to put the screws in. Now the screws really don't have to go in that far. Actually, I went in too far on several of them. Again, it was a little bit of a rush instead of taking my time and measuring the depth of the hole and how far I was screwing this screw into the wood. But nonetheless, I've got those situated now where it will hold the nail guns in place. Now that these three are in position, I'll take them off, flip the board over, and go ahead and mount the remaining two nail guns on the other side. I'm putting the board between the outfeed table and the uh, table saw so that I don't have to remove the screws. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to place the two nail guns in the approximate location that I want it. I will mark the location with the pencil and then drill the pilot holes and put the screws into position. Pretty simple process. I'm being a little bit more cautious this time putting the screws in. I really don't need to have them go all the way through the wood. Now I just took the shelf over, slid it in place, and now you can see how it's going to operate. <laughs> not bad at all. I like this a lot. I'm glad that I'm not taking up tons of wall space, which I don't have. So if you look at this, I have the three guns on this side. And these are the ones that I probably use more often than anything else. And then when I close this, I can easily access the other two guns and I don't even need to pull the shelf out. So I think this is going to be a fantastic solution and it still leaves me some wall space left in case I want to do another project. So I'm going to call this one done. This was a fun project to do, and it's something I've been thinking about for a while that I wanted to be able to do to get the 
uh, nail guns out of the cabinet, which was really a wasted space of a uh, good cabinet. This way they're easy to get to, take up very little space, and I think this is a great addition to the shop. So hopefully, if you have a situation like this, you can do this type of uh, arrangement in your shop to put some easy to reach tools and utilize the sides of the cabinet. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.